So Joe Biden is giving $13 billion to Ukraine. So if you follow my other channel, Brand Video Pro, I talk a lot about the Ukraine invasion. I have a series called you know, Dummy's Guide to, you know, what's happening in Ukraine. Um, literally, like, pro I think I have, like, 12 or 13 episodes. So I break it down from, you know, scratch. So, guys, go check that out if you really want to get the, the nitty-gritty, understand what's happening, see a different perspective than what you're getting from the mainstream media. Go check that out. But in this video, I want to talk about don't fight for them. Don't fight for them. I'll talk about Ukraine. And, you know, I've broken down in these videos about how black people were being mistreated in Ukraine. And there's this energy that, you know, well, first of all, the way the media even refused to cover it, they, it took, the, it happened, it's like weeks ago now. <laughs> it's like a month ago now. But it happened, and then we saw the footage of black people being, you know, pushed off, stopped from entering the trains, dragged off, all this, you know, people being held at gunpoint. We saw these videos, and the, the notice how the media didn't want to, mainstream media didn't want to cover this. They didn't want to cover this. <laughs> and it took them like a few days because it was happening so much and this was such a big story that, okay, after like three days, they started covering this, which is crazy because you guys have to understand. This was like when Ukraine popped, it was like literally exactly a month ago. As it, things were happening, there were updates every moment. So we knew exactly what was happening. But notice how nobody wanted to update us. Nobody wanted to give us updates about the black people. Let's just ignore that. That turned a lot of black people off, turned a lot of black people off. But I thought it was so interesting how the Ukraine government was now asking, trying to recruit people. I mean, they were recruiting people around the world. That's fine. Europeans fight, go fight for them, whatever. But them recruiting people in Africa, that was problematic. Like they tried to recruit people in Senegal. I know they tried to do it in Nigeria and the Nigerian government said, Absolutely not. On Monday, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs released a statement indicating that the federal government of Nigeria will not tolerate the recruitment of Nigerians as fighters in the Russia-Ukraine war. This follows the recent call by President Vladimir Zelensky of Ukraine for people around the world to join in combating Russia's invasion of the country. <laughs> Absolutely not. And, you know, there are reports of, like, people, on, people wanting to fight for them. And I'm just like, don't fight for them. You're watching The Kenamo Show and I'm your host, Kenamo. Stream OVG is back. You can get exclusive content, exclusive content. It's my Patreon type um, subscription service. You know, I do things independently, so I'm not going to go on someone else's platform. I have my own platform, streamovg.com, and you can get exclusive content from me. So I have everything. Your dummy's guide to global politics. You know, you get a video every week that breaks down the political landscape from a very dynamic and in-depth way, more than the way that I do it on Brand Video Pro. You also get music and entertainment business, some exclusive content on that. Um, and, and, and I'm coming out with the Ken Mo Show's exclusives, but that's not ready yet. So for now, you get these, you get these packages. And also my Africa collection, which has a collection of my films that I've produced and I've released you know, a collections of my films, my documentaries, you get that all um, on there. So go check it out. It's, you know, starting at $1.99, super affordable. Go check it out. Anyway, let's continue. You know, do not fight for them. This is their business. This is not our business. I'm already upset enough that $13 billion of taxpayer dollars in America, something percent of that is paid by black people. And this is how they treat black people there. And when it was time to get on this bus, the Ukrainians said, just Ukrainians, literally as a black person, I even lied that I was pregnant. They didn't care. I was begging. The official literally looked me in my eye and said, in his language, only Ukrainians, that's all. That if you are black, you should walk. 
and that was an additional eight hours from where we were by car it was like 30 minutes so we had to walk additional eight hours <laughs> think about the percentage of black people you know in america paying taxes for joe biden to send to ukraine that's the only way you're gonna get my money that's the only way you're gonna get my money i'm not donating i am not I am not, obviously I'm not going to fight any war, but <laughs> it's just a mess. I think to me, my biggest, you know, hang up in that situation is because people were trying to make excuses for them, right? This, look, it's terrible that this is happening in Ukraine. It's like, you don't want to see humans killed. You don't want to see children die. Or you don't want to see anything like that. So it's terrible for this happening in Ukraine, but I feel like let's give the same energy for when it happens in Cameroon, in Syria. Let's give that same energy, but no, that's not what the media is doing. Like, I'm gonna play a clip of the media, so many clips of media reporters saying disgusting things. I mean, it's been a month, we're a month into this war now. You know, this is a relatively civilized, uh, relatively European. I have and this is not a developing third world nation. This is Europe. These are um, Christians, so white. So what is NATO going to do if, you know, it's one thing for sarin gas to get into Ukraine, but what about people in faraway countries who are Muslim and who are of a different cu culture? What is Europe going to do when it's on European soil done to Europeans? Are they going to intervene? Wow. Are they going to keep sits? Um, so many disgusting clips of these Western media outlets saying disgusting things, you know, but there's this pressure. My issue right now is the pressure that white society is placing on the world to donate, support, fight for Ukraine. There's this pressure, but I'm like, have you seen the way they're treating black people? So once we got to the front of the queue, we were told to exit the car queue by um, a civilian. A male civilian told us to exit the car queue. The pedestrian queue, it was just non-white Ukrainian people. So I was confused as to why we're being told, once we've reached a queue that we've been yeah. in for two days, why we're now being told to join a father. There were no Ukrainian people in that queue. And they couldn't explain to you why they were doing it? I no. think, you know. I don't even, I bet you there's still black people stuck there. You know, and then there's always an excuse. You know, the Ukrainian ambassador was speaking at the Home Affairs Select Committee and he confirmed that he's aware of, of some of the issues that have problems have arisen, as he says, when foreigners appear to be prioritised for evacuation. It's been raised many times. Ukraine is a very homogenic society. Not many people with different races on the streets. Foreigners do stick out of the crowd. It doesn't mean we are racist, is what he says. We don't want it to happen. Problems arise when foreigners are prioritised over women and children of Ukrainian citizenship who are trying to get on the same trains or trying to get through the borders. Of course, you're a woman. I'm a woman. So that was my argument, because even when the man was cycling the car, he tried to lunch with me, and the military at no point intervened, which I found very, very odd. There's always an excuse, like, oh, um, it's not their fault that the officials were treated. No, these are not just officials. These are civilians. These are civilians. These are people that are working at, at the bus stations. These are re regular people, you know, civilians that I'm supposed to feel sorry for. These are the same people that are dragging black people off tra off of trains. These are the same people that are, you know, blocking, telling black people that you have to walk. And those are the people I'm supposed to feel sorry for and those are the people I'm supposed to donate to. You have to understand. <laughs> you have to understand that no, you know, if you want... And at, at, the, at the end of the day, look, at the end of the day, this is a white man's war. Go fight your war. Right, this is a white man's war, go fight your war. But don't drag everybody else into it, because it's not our business, you know. Go watch, you know, I've broken down, and I think it's so interesting how, <laughs> I've broken down in my series, The Dummy's Guide to What's Going On in Ukraine, I've broken it down in details. Putin's perspective, uh, the US perspective, I get both sides, I am not taking sides. Both sides have validity if you look at it objectively, without sort of like the brainwashed U.S. propaganda, because U.S. is winning the propaganda war. So it's kind of like you're kind of bullied into supporting the mainstream media perspective. But I cannot ignore watching black people, you know, dragged off trains, blocked from entering trains, told to walk for days just to get out. <laughs> there are too many examples. 
And I'm not going. And and, and it, the interesting thing about the Western media when they report these stories, even though it took them a while to report it, first of all, but when they report it, they call it reports. We're hearing reports as though it's like oh, a faraway thing. They don't just call it what it is, racism, right? So that's one thing they'll say reports. And then another thing is like oh, they're like oh well, it's so sad that this happened. Anyway, moving on, support Ukraine. They never draw the conclusion. They never give an analysis of this is terrible that the Ukrainian people that we are supposed to, they're asking for us to help them are doing the same thing that Putin is doing to them to black people. There's never any analysis about this. It's just like, oh, well, this is so sad that it's happening. Oh, well, next story. So if there's no accountability on your end, why should we care what's happening in Ukraine? This is a real question. Why should we care what's happening in Ukraine when they don't care about what happens to black people? When the media doesn't even care enough to even give an analysis. These are news reporters. You can't get them to shut up. You can't get them to stop analyzing basic things. But when it comes to black people being mistreated in Ukraine, they'll listen to the story but there's no analysis, no drawing up of conclusions, no realization that the Ukrainians are oppressing black people the same way that Putin is oppressing them. There's no analysis there. It's just, oh, well, let's support Ukraine. No, I don't support Ukraine. I don't support Putin. Quite frankly, the only thing I support is freedom, democracy, but I don't believe that Ukraine, supporting Ukraine is the gateway to freedom. Over the weekend, the president of Ukraine, Volodymyr Zelensky, banned that party. Opposition Platform for Life is now prohibited from, quote, all activity within Ukraine. So with a single command, Zelensky made it impossible for anybody to run against him for president. He did this not just to Opposition Platform for Life, but to 10 other political parties that he believed were insufficiently loyal to him. They're all illegal now. Obviously, there's a war underway in Ukraine, and on that basis, Zelensky has declared martial law. But we must tell you there is no evidence that the opposition parties he banned were aiding Russia in its war against Ukraine. Opposition Platform for Life, for example, denounced the Russian invasion the moment it happened, just like everybody else. But Zelensky took the opportunity to turn Ukraine into effectively a one-party state, which it now is. So having banned all opposition, he then seized control of the country's media outlets. Zelensky signed a decree that combines all national television channels into a single platform that he controls. He described this as a, quote, unified information policy, and it certainly is unified. Zelensky has been solidifying complete control over Ukraine for a long time, since long before the Russian invasion and the war. Last year, he had his main political opponent arrested and his assets seized by the state. At the same time, Zelensky shut down three of Ukraine's most popular television networks, channels that, not coincidentally, had criticized him. I think that this war is between Putin and Ukraine. I think if Europe wants to get involved, that's their business. This is a white man's war. This ain't got nothing to do with anybody else. So Ukraine asking people in Africa to fight their war. I'm so glad the Nigerian government said absolutely not. Because we have to understand the history of this. We have to understand what happens, you know, like in World War II when uh, mercenaries were told to fight in World War II. What happens? They just discard you. They just dump you. <laughs> you lose your limbs. You, 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 if, you, even, if you don't lose your life, right? If you don't lose your life, you, you probably lose your limbs. You, you, you have trauma, PTSD. You have all these things. And then they just send you back to your country. So a lot of people are saying they want to go and fight this war. They think that this is their gateway to Ukraine. They don't know they're going to enter a war and they're probably going to die in that war, Right? If they're lucky enough to live, they're going to struggle. So I say don't fight this war because they just want to use black lives and kill black people. <laughs> they just want to use you and, and discard you when they're done. So this is a war for Ukraine to fight. This is their business. This is nobody else's business, right? If, if Europe wants to get involved, that's their business. But I don't think anybody else should get involved. And I certainly am not donating a dollar, not even a cent, to Ukraine. 
not I, I and I, I'm gonna be honest I felt bad when it first happened but when I saw the way the inhuman way the Ukrainian people the Ukrainian people were treating black people I refuse to support them and that's just where I stand <laughs> Is where I stand. But anyway, if you guys want to know the details, I have about 13 episodes giving you the, the politics, giving you the dynamics. I break it down in so much detail about what's going on, why it's happening, both perspectives. I try to stay un- unbiased. Um, I try to stay unbiased. And for me, <laughs> you treat people that way. You treat people like trash, but then you ask us all to feel sorry for you or you ask us all to help you. No. No, you have to be, there needs to be accountability. I think Ukrainian people need to be accountable for the way that they treat black people. And that's just my two cents. Anyway, those are my thoughts. Let me know your thoughts. Leave a comment down below. Don't forget to like, follow, subscribe, all the above. You're watching The Kenimo Show, and I'm your host, Kenimo.